Hey everyone, back with the sort of content that I like to make, which is uh, nothing stays as it was um, for very long, and um, we're going to start back with the Toshiba satellite. 4015 almost forgot the model number there I uh, ordered some stuff online for it a few things uh, starting off with a battery upgrade and of course a non-genuine battery because um, you know they stopped making these things ages ago I uh, just wanted to return some of that portability uh, to the machine because uh, the battery only held a charge for about five minutes unlike my um, original laptop which I've had for years that goes for a few hours um, but I ran out of spares, so I found this one on a local auction site, and I'm pleased to report it does hold a charge, and it does give me a few hours, actually, of running time, so very nice. Um, yeah, one of the simpler upgrades, of course, because it just clips in like so, no tools required. But now I wanted to move on to something um, a bit more interesting. And that is replacement hard drives. So this thing has the factory uh, four gigabyte Toshiba hard drive. Um, it's very worn, very tired, and um, very slow. I'll uh, put a link to the device in the description, but basically this is just a, an adapter, an IDE adapter. A slight catch with these things is they're not manufactured to the same tolerances as a, an official uh, hard drive. Um, they seem to be uh, ever so slightly out, so they don't fit in exactly every computer. I tried this in a ThinkPad, it didn't like it at all. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, it's just a 2.5 inch um, IDE adapter to mSATA. So you can fit one of these mSATA hard drives. I just happen to have a 128 gig drive here. Um, the reason I'm trying this out is um, mSATA hard drives are easier to find than compact flash cards. Uh, where I am, um, you have to order compact flash cards online, there's no local stores that um, stock them. Um, they're also really expensive and only now available in larger capacities. I've also been burned a few times in the past by buying compact flash cards on eBay, so now I stick to buying them second hand on my local sort of Craigslist type thing, which is called Trade Me. Um, but yeah, I wanted to try this out, and these adapters are really cheap. I think they're under like 10 bucks or something in uh, New Zealand, so if it works, it might be a good alternative um, to those compact flash adapters. Uh, and also the MSATA hard drive is designed for constant read-writes and things like that, where you know, it might get some extra longevity, um, obviously accounting for trim support and things like that. Um, I'm not going to use all of the hard drive um, capacity, so um, hopefully that will help keep the drive a little bit, you know, better health. Uh, but yeah, super easy to switch these over. Uh, there's just four screws that come out of the original drive, and then um, they just, of course, go into the adapter, which doesn't actually have any threads for the screws, so um, I had to make my own, of course, when screwing in the drive. And that was just, of course, um, a quick shot of the model of the drive that was in the machine. I'm actually surprised um, that it still works, given the hard life this uh, laptop has had. And the reason, one of the other reasons um, I'm doing this is um, better battery life, uh, speed, you know, improvement, and also the ability to just move the laptop around. Uh, I not have to worry about the hard drive destroying itself as the platters get eaten up when you, um, you know, like shake the crap out of the laptop or something in frustration. But, um, but not that I do that, not that I do that. Process is very simple. Um, I'm going to just use Mac and Reflect to clone the, um, the drive I did from the original build. Installation again is easy, it just slides in like that. These laptops are pretty easy to work on well for basic upgrades like this. Um, I am having to push and finesse the um, adapter down on certain angles to make sure the pins line up. As I said, the manufacturing tolerances on these things are pretty terrible, um, but you can make it work with some gentle persuasion. It's just making sure everything lines up nicely so you don't um, beat the crap out of it. Well, thankfully, as before, the installation is very easy on this machine. Um, and I was equally as pleased to see that it boots uh, straight away. 
which is always nice. Uh, the Scander Stone, I wouldn't be too worried about it. It's um, because Windows 95 has this shutdown bug on this machine, it will just hang, but um, it all booted up just fine. Um, the speed is actually really good. I was really pleased to see how fast it was. It's amazing the difference. Um, the We are limited by the speed of the bus and things like that, the IDE bus. So. Um, what I'm going to do now is something a little bit different, um, given I've got 128 gigs of available storage, and yes, this BIOS does recognise the whole drive, which I thought was actually quite incredible for a laptop this old. Um, so what I'm going to do is split it up. Um, I'm going to give um, the lion's share to uh, Windows 9X, um, just so I can install a crap ton of games and software onto this machine. Um, not that I'll use all of it, it's just, you know, you know, you gotta have all that, all that space just sitting there, it's like, might as well use it. Um, but yeah, I'm using Partition Magic 7 for that, really compatible with uh, machines around this era. Um, I think you can get it on uh, winworld.pc.com, uh, I'll put a link in the description. But yeah, after a quick reboot, um, straight away we've got the um, available space to us, which is nice to see. And um, given this machine also supports Windows NT, I'm going to put on uh, Windows 2000. And the reason I'm doing that is because there is some networking stuff that I want to play with on this machine. And plus just having dual booting is always nice. Um, you've got some options. And uh, this is a Pentium 2 machine, so you know, it is capable of running Windows 2K. And um, I'm going to leave a little bit of space um, just for the hard drive if it needs to do any trim stuff. I've uh, always kind of had this soft spot for Windows 2000, I don't know what it is, um, I've used it um, at home and professionally and growing up, um, I will probably do a video on it at some point, I've got a bit of a plan that I want to do, um, but here it is on the Toshiba and we have internet networking on um, Windows uh, NT, sorry, well I should probably specify 2000 and up is actually a lot easier than 9X of course. Um, and I've installed a Microsoft Office XP Pro, this is a legit copy, um, copy is probably not the term, a legit version that I have, um, product keys and all. Um, and the online activation of course doesn't work, probably because either the servers are off or the SSL. But the phone activation does still work, so you can actually install this and ring the 0800 number and talk to the lovely robot lady who will read out the digits um, and you can go through and actually activate it, which I thought was pretty cool. And of course um, Office XP is the last version to support um, Windows 9X and also the first version to have activation, which makes it really annoying to install. I remember having to do this a few times in the past and it was like, because I used to rebuild my computers every like, like three months and I actually got asked, are you sure this is the same computer you're installing it on? I was like, yes it is. Um, but now we can make some really, really ugly um, menus and gift certificates and things like that. So here we go, Microsoft is providing you a ugly gift certificate. How special. Um, and I've installed a few different apps and things like that on the machine. Uh, very basic sort of utilities, but that Bongio, or however you pronounce it, utility, um, I should have captured some footage of it, is actually a really handy wireless utility for Windows 2000. And it actually gives you WPA2 support. Um, as long as your, your wireless adapter supports it, um, yeah, really, really handy utility. I sadly don't have one that supports it. Um, well, I have a USB one which I tested and it does work. I don't have any PC cards that uh, support it. So, 
yeah, just keep that in the in the back of your mind. If anyone needs WPA2 support on Windows 2000, you can download that horrible looking utility and it will connect you up. Of course, native drivers provided by Toshiba. Um, it has a few Windows 2000 drivers, um, just some basic things, sort of nice to have. Also, this uh, Windows 2000 saving your settings thing it still takes a really long time. I'm not too sure what it's doing here, but it's farting around. It's really annoying, but um, yeah, it does get there eventually. But the other reason I wanted the networking support was to use BBSs. It's um, something I don't do a lot of, but you know, it's always fun to uh, mess around with. Uh, so here we go. I think I'm on uh, level 29, I believe is the name of the BBS. The address is above on the taskbar um, or window um, taskbar <laughs> at the top, top left. Uh, but yeah, really fun just to chat, chat to people. Um, some people have questions and things on you know hardware and you know it's always nice to provide um, help for them as well. Um, yeah, Windows 2000 uh, installed without any issues um, and now what I'm going to do is just copy over from uh, a disk I saved of some of the OEM info. Um, so uh, I'll just copy over that to the uh, system, I think it's like the system 32 or one of those folders. A quick reboot later, um, we've got the dual boot option here, nice to have, we've got Windows 95 down below and of course Windows 2000 which is the default um, and it is actually quite fast to start up, I'll just let this run here so you can see how long it takes. I uh, forgot to capture the audio uh, here but basically it is booted up it's just loading a few programs it's not the fastest still it is a lot faster than it was um, I think it's just because we're limited by the CPU uh, the bus speed of the IDE controller and things like that um, but hey new battery wireless networking and uh, we have um, a portable machine and with a um, SSD in there it means you can uh, move it around while it's running and not have to worry about destroying the hard drive which is always fun on retro uh, machines but yeah it is truly portable now it's uh, the name of the game uh, the machine is portable I'm not gonna bring it to sp Starbucks or anything and write a write a novel like those uh, hipster fancy people but um, I've got a um, card bus uh, wireless adapter in there. I've connected it to a web uh, wireless access point, which I actually unplug when I'm done because um, WEP encryption is not very encrypted. But yeah, I enjoy it. Um, it works a treat, and this is the sort of upgrades I like. It is my bag, baby. It is um, the simple stuff. It's fun to do, easy. Um, and yeah, I think it's a great alternative, that IDE adapter, so check it out if um, anyone needs one. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and uh, there's some more projects coming up soon. Alrighty, bye for now.